Big Bang Theory RL, the life, the real life, uh, life adventures, well, real life at the research desk, uh, uh, life uh, of a nerd along the lines of uh, Sheldon Cooper and Leonard Hofstetter of uh, Big Bang Theory. And I have to work on my enunciation, my pronunciation, I should say, uh, and my enunciation, the, the art of bringing out your voice, uh, Speaking clearly so that you can be heard and a conversation can be had. Now, this is something I have to sort of keep logically, you know, well, consciously in my mind. Uh, I do I am fumbling over words. I'm still in a bit of a funk in terms of uh, uh, call it mental fog, if you will, where things are still, I'm still not fully awake yet. I'm just sort of getting up. It is uh, the second Christmas Eve. You can see here on the. It is nine forty-four of uh, uh, Sunday, January six, two thousand nineteen. Though technically on the astronomical calendar, the Egyptian calendar, uh, which was often referred to as the Julian calendar or the so-called old calendar, even though the Egyptian calendar, along with the Mayan calendar. Several of the older astronomical calendars are unbelievably accurate, uh, more so than the current calendar in terms of an astronomical perspective. Uh, you, know, you want to figure out where you are. You want to figure out what's going on in the universe. Well, in terms of uh, of our our perspective, our observational point of the universe, and then you need to use the and they use an astronomical calendar, you can, and one of the most convenient ones, because it's been around for so long, is the uh, Julian calendar or the uh, Egyptian astronomical calendar. They're one and the same thing. They basically uh, have the same uh, fundamentals to them, where the new calendar invented by Pope Gregory doesn't. So uh, we are in Vlogmas 2018 still, because uh, we are heading towards the new astronomical year, if you will. Right, we've had a, our solar new year. Now we're heading towards the astronomical new year. Uh, and this is the discrepancy between the two calendars. One is a solar one, and then the other one is a uh, astronomical calendar. So we are heading towards our astronomical new year. Uh, we are having our astronomical Christmas. Uh, this is the uh, 6th and 7th. 6th is the uh, New Year's Eve. 7th is the uh, is the Christmas Day. Uh, so we're still in Vlogmas. But uh, for the ancient church, uh, the ancient Eastern church, uh, uh, the 12 days of Christmas is still quite ac active. So if you sing the same carol on the 12th day of Christmas, you know, uh, you know, we're on the first day of Christmas, and they go up to 12 days, or, you know, however you want to do it. Uh, that Car Carol anyway says, well, that was once upon a time celebrated. A long thing with the old good King Wenceslas uh, went out on the Feast of Stephen. You know, that these are all ancient, so these are all old early songs that have kind of disappeared in terms of the actuality of, of the date. Uh, but, and, and the practices, but uh, for the Eastern Church, for the, the ancient Church, they're still there. So you take us to the seventh, which is the old Christmas, the astronomical Christmas, uh, and this was celebrated by uh, George Washington, uh, the English, up until the 1880s. So it is actually within the American tradition to do this, to celebrate old Christmas, even though it's been sort of been removed 
from the minds of the current people. The old Christmas was there. It was under uh, under uh, George Washington, under uh, Abraham Lincoln. Uh, so you did you uh, you know Thomas Jefferson. This was there. This was a part of their reality. Uh, so we can celebrate the uh, the, we call it the old Christmas, the the Washington's Christmas, if you will, you know, Washington George Washington's Christmas, and then you add the twelve days of Christmas to it. That takes you to the baptism of the of the Lord, uh, the baptism of Christ, and that's around that's the twentieth, the nineteenth, twentieth. So. Uh, so that takes you to uh, 12 days, you know, 7 plus, 7 plus 12, that takes you to the 19th of, uh, of January, and then on, on, on the 20th, you say your goodbye, and that's it for the next year, till the next year, in terms of the Christmas, but, uh, there's, le there's about a month and a half till basically March 1st, then you bring out, then you break out the Pascha stuff, you know, <laughs> for, for Passover, and you have a vlog for Passover. If you're gonna do the Christmas, you can do the blog, uh, vlog for Passover. Which, in the, again, in the Western tradition, they've dumped the old uh, Passover uh, 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 festivals and brought in Easter. So now instead of having the uh, uh, crucifixion and resurrection of Christ, you have uh, an an Easter bunny, a, a pagan Easter bunny, hopping, hopping around laying Easter eggs. You know, of course, you have every kid wants to have the Easter egg hunt. They have Easter egg bag. They have Easter outfits, uh, and and much like uh, Christmas, but to a more significant degree, a large chunk of the Christian aspect has been fundamentally removed, and in comes a more we we'll call a generic form of celebration well what's for everybody well i think is the christian feasts are always for everybody i mean you go into uh, uh let me talk about the path in a, just a few minutes well, let's get into uh this whole issue on, on on of saturnalia as being christmas well if you end up studying any, to any degree of depth uh the history of saturnalia well, Saturn. This is Saturn is for the for the pagan god Saturn, and as the father of time, he ate his children. So, in Christmas at Christmas time, if you're Saturnalia, instead of sitting around roasting chest, chestnuts on open fire, open fire, you'd be sitting around roasting your children over open fire. Instead of having roast beef or or or. Uh, or a ham, or, or, or a turkey for 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 uh, uh, Christmas dinner, or lunch, or however you want to do this. You would have your children. You would eat your children. You'd roast, and cook, and whatever you do, you know, <laughs> whatever these cannibals do to uh, eat their children or eat children in general. And we know this from Pizzagate, from Hillary Clinton. You know, <laughs> you know Rosie O'Donnell supposedly involved in all this. I think this this Pizzagate wasn't. Oh, it's a red herring. Well, no, it's not really a red herring. It's just more than what people think it is. It's it's this stuff has been around for a long time. Um, uh, go and look at the history of the Rhodes Scholarship. Who was who was this guy Rhodes? And you'll find he's a black magician. You know that that a large chunk of these sort of people were these initiates into so-called the dark arts <laughs> and as you sort of figure this out you begin to realize hey this stuff has been around for a long time they've been eating kids for a long time not and that what we saw with the uh, the glimpse into the the hillary clinton uh, uh, uh thing was uh, something that was more than likely going on at the uh, bohemian grove if you you know getting into this type of stuff uh uh, I don't take everything at face value. You do have to listen to people in terms of what they're saying, but listen to some of the lectures. But uh, there is a lot that is fantasy and fiction, there, but there's also a kernel of truth there. And if you're going to sort of go in and do the analysis, you can sort of pick out what the kernel of truth is, then you do have to do a bit of uh, sort of investigative work. And 
a lot of time the research work that you're doing, the investigation, the analysis, uh, leaves you punch drunk, tired, very, very, very tired, uh, because you spend long hours, 10, 12, more, uh, at your research desk, and this is how things evolve. And so that's the way things go. And the thing is that now that we have got, got this done, and I know that I have to talk only when I'm facing this, because when I'm facing the other way, the voice doesn't carry as well. Note that the lighting with the, with the TV uh, now works very well. I've got that more or less there, so you can see the time, you can see the date, you can actually see the, di the uh, weather from AccuWeather. You can see my anime girl there. So, uh, let's go into my open, my IPTV. And this is kind of the thing. We're coming to Bertelli's page. And uh, this is Bertelli. Now, you notice with the white, notice with the white, it doesn't work as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, open the new link, and there we go, much better. This is a video uh, that Annie, the, 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 this is the last video they did, and it was, uh, I think, one or two, one or two days ago, and there it's, it's titled Changes, and... I think what's happened is you, you sort of sort of see this, and when as they're uh, and uh, this happens to a lot of vloggers, particularly if they're doing daily, they run out of things. Particularly as the kids get older, they get they run out of things. Oh, my video isn't as exciting as it was before. My uh, I don't have the content that I would like before, that I had before. Uh, in other words, there's a, a bit of dissatisfaction, and you and what happens. Because this is normal with everything. There are fights and there there are times that are good, times that are bad. And, well, short, uh, uh, long story short, I was surprised. You know, they cut their video time short. They say now only once a week rather than daily. This is actually what ended up happening a, a while ago uh, when the new algorithm that was pop that that was sort of aimed at uh, against Donald Trump and anything that was family oriented, not alternatively sort of the the alternative uh, choice, if you will. Uh, if it's not the alternative choice, because they were trying to push the alternative choice to the top, anything that was family Republican or conservative or seemingly so got pushed way back in the thing, way back in their ratings. In other words, they lost viewership, they lost, lost subscription. Uh, and anyone who's been on uh, YouTube or long enough knows that YouTube has always been tweaking the numbers, your subscription numbers, your viewership numbers, to reduce, because the algorithm that, that they're trying to bring up, and it's kind of, it's a bit of a fraud. As a, partner with them and they have these partnerships and so these are now more gone or become more restrictive they pay you for the content you produce when you've got enough content producers that you don't need the smaller group for uh don't need the fall smaller group anymore or because they've now tiered their services they've now got a premium service so they don't need a lot of the uh the smaller vlog channels but what they're doing is they're going to try to get rid of them and how do you do that? You change the value of the views, and the number of views you have to, in terms of, your, and also your subscription determines how much you get paid, because you get a percentage percentage of the advertising revenue. Now I've chosen not to monetize my stuff. I don't monetize my channel, so I have no issue of losing my monetization. If they want to put commercials up, no problem. I don't care. It doesn't bother me what they do or don't. Uh, I just don't want to be monetized because I don't want to be under their restrictions. Uh, I want a free channel. I want to do what I want to do and understand that I want to do things my own way. And so that means, you know, you're going to have to take a bit, a bit more of a risk than you would doing a standard channel. So I understand that. There's no problem. Uh, but what they've done is they've said anyone who doesn't meet the certain standards turns the turn, this is the this is how the algorithm works but it turns out it goes from a thought 
or concept to a mathematical formula, and as this mathematical mathematical formula works its way through, what it does, it takes uh, channels that they do not approve of or, or, or want in the forefront, and they cut the number so it falls back in the rating system. Now the problem with this, and this is where if, if you're a partner, this is fraud. Why is it fraud? Because if you ever watch YouTube, all the advertisements are front-loaded. In other words, before you watch any video, you're going to watch an ad. So that doesn't mean, so it, it, even if I watched a video for one second, in terms of this, this, this channel here, but daily, I will watch one second of their video, I've already seen the ad. Because the ad comes on first, you can't turn really can't turn it off until you get to get to the content. You watch it through, however long it is, and then you get to your content. That means the ad has already played. You should be counted even if you're watching one second of Vertali. So what they'll do is they'll say, oh, okay, well, you have to watch a minimum of 30 seconds of Vertali in order to get that view counted. But sometimes they, they set it up to be more. It depends on what the algorithm says and how much time of the video you have to watch in order to uh, uh, achieve the rankings. And so the longer you watch a video, the better you get your rankings. But the thing is, if they're knocking that off to cut you out, it becomes a more of a difficult challenge. Where the fraud comes in, they're, all, they're getting paid for that advertising. That, that advertising fee has already been paid. It doesn't matter how long your video is because the, the ad is front-loaded. And so what happens if you fall below their what's we call specs in terms of what the algorithm wants in terms of how, how many how many seconds of views a second of view you have that, or someone has watched, uh, then you're not getting paid even though they're getting paid. In other words, you're not getting a percentage of the ad that shows on your, your on your video because it's not long enough. This is the whole issue of length of videos and so on and so on. But the, the thing is, you'll see that you'll see that some of these very short videos we up on, you know, very high up on the recommend board. Why? Because they're taking the smaller content that that, that is more sort of uh, meets their guidelines. Even though you don't have a large amount of time there. There goes my uh, clock. It's now 10 o'clock. And they push it to the front, and all of a sudden, just people start getting more subscriptions. The time, length of time doesn't change. And that is because the algorithm is picking up the smaller bits instead of taking from the family channels, instead of uh, you know allowing the family channels to do the long one, taking the shorter ones and moving it up to the front. So as this as this small thing back here is shuttled to the front, the whole line moves back. So what happens is that so let's say this guy here is his video he's got uh, what YouTube wants to put to push this an alternative channel, small viewership takes it puts puts it to the front of the line, the whole line gets squeezed back. If you're that one, you're, here's the cutoff line. You were here. Now, when they add the one more channel, it takes you back one, you know, past the uh, cutoff line in terms of uh, getting cut off. Uh, well, there goes your channel. And this is what you saw in, in uh, 2018. Uh, you saw a lot of channels, uh, Clintus, and I'll show you another channel right now. He lost a lot of his uh, viewership. We go down. This is my, my TV guide, as I said before. This is how I got the TV guide, TV guide done. I want to change the background a little bit, change the, the, the lettering up a little bit, because uh, the the dark view, the night view, is much better. Okay, so here it is. Here, this is Clintus uh, TV. Let's get to the. Uh, main part of the channel here. This is his video. That way we can see it better. This is Clintus TV. Uh, a lot of YouTubers will end up doing very well. They move out of their more modest homes into a much, much larger house. This means their expenses go up. 
And the problem with this is you, you would expect the revenue would have to keep up as well. So when YouTube went and changed its algorithm, people like Clinton's like Clintus got very, hit very hard. They almost lost his house. Uh, Kitty's mama lost their house. They lost their studios and everything. Uh, and the thing is, the e, 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 Shaytards would have been hit a lot harder because Shaytards are on and off now. They were the vlogging family, but they're now kind of knocked off and they're wobbling around. If you could imagine, you know, a car is doing very well and it's, you know, pristine and looking great and ooh, it's top notch and everyone's walk, walk, looking at it. All of a sudden, you see it get hit and blindsided, taken out completely so it disappears for a bit, comes back, but still, even though it comes back, it's like, you still see you know, the wobbly wheels and you, know, you hear the squeaking. and this, it, It's been fixed up, but it's not what it was before. This was due to Disney. Disney had done this to Maker Studios. And it did the same, it's doing the same thing now to Bertelli, with Brant Productions, as it did to the Shade Tarts. And why, why do this? Why do this? Because Disney wants the content for itself. It wants to control everything. It's about control. It's about market share. And in the beginning, they'll act very nice and, oh, how talented they are. And they'll support you and say, well, and they'll say, well you know, I think your channel, you know, it, you, you're doing a lot of work here. You're doing a lot of acting work. I think it might be better if you stuck with the acting sort of Dial back a bit on your channel, and that's the hint that what they're doing, and this is what why the I, I, you know YouTube Red was the biggest mistake YouTube and Google ever made, because they're going to do to YouTube what they're trying to do now to Netflix. They're going to destroy it. They don't want the competition. YouTube Red is a competition for Hollywood. They're not going to get, get the movies that Hollywood that these big production studios are going to uh, have. Because the, 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 the production studios of Hollywood, the old guard, have been there for a long time. They've got deep roots. They've got a lot of money there. They have money that YouTube and all these other smaller upstarts don't have. And it was the open platform that really built YouTube. Now that it's starting to try to close this off, the same thing happened to Vimeo. Vimeo was open. It was starting to grow. They closed it off. They teared it off and psh, died. Daily Motion, exact same thing. So if you want to have a good platform, and this is more along the lines of an uh, old TV platform called UHF, uh, Ultra High Frequency TV, which was back when you had the old called terrestrial stations, and you had old uh, not analog broadcast. Uh, the Ultra High Frequency, uh, uh, this is produced for channels from uh, anything, let's see, it would be basically, I think, 14, 15, all the way up to a couple hundred to, to about 120, something like that, were the UHF channels. And that's, they, they, this is what produced Star Trek. All the, the classics we see were all on, were all UHF channels. They weren't on the Prime channels. They came into the Prime channels later on, but the, before, Batman, uh, Superman, uh, Spider-Man, they were all on these sort of uh, offshoot channels on the ultra-high frequency that were sort of they weren't the majors. And it's, this is where you get a large chunk of your UHF content coming in to the mainstream. This is how we get a lot of our content now today. Marvel Comics, all these different things all came out of UHF. And UHF was, was a much more creative platform because it didn't cost as much as the as the majors did. So the majors, you had to produce something very large, you know, it, it was a major production under under VHF, that, under, that's your channels uh, 2 to 12. Those were your prime channels. Prime channels, very difficult to get things on. On a UHF channel, depending on how, how much the, the, the company was willing to pay for it, you could get almost <laughs> stuff for dirt cheap. Uh, and this is why you have a lot of old shows still remaining, you know, Gilligan's Island, you had uh, Bonanza, uh, all the old shows stuck around because they found a new home on uh, on UHF. This is what syndication was about. You take the Prime show that was built on a private TV channel way back when. It's now off-season to finish shooting it. You rerun it on the uh, higher channels, the channels that are not as important. And this was the whole thing behind syndication, is that you can make money by recycling the shows that were no longer in production. 
And this is, this is what YouTube was. YouTube was like this and still is pretty much like this. And this is what I'm going after. But everyone else is still kind of fiddling around and trying to... Fortunately, Clinton is back. He's, he, he realized that changing his channel format wasn't doing the job that he wouldn't, wasn't going to get any more than he had. And now he's back to vlogging. He does a good job of vlogging. And vlogging is about the conversation. If the conversation isn't there, you don't like the person you're having the conversation with, there's no vlog. Anyways, uh, we're at the 25-minute mark. I'm going to keep it like this. This is the, sort of the TV format. 20, 25 minutes is the TV format for a half-hour show. Uh, for those who've cut the cable, I'm hoping to create an alternative to cable TV. That's why it's also Cyborg Alpha TV Network. Things are in development here, but it's going to take a bit of time to get everything organized, to start getting the shows up to doing the production values and the production schedule and so on and so forth. Uh, anyways, uh, I'd like to wish everyone who's celebrating an Eastern Christmas, uh, the Ukrainians, the Russians, the uh, people from the Middle East, Kola Krisuyana, Khorny Pala, and uh, Merry Christmas. All right. See you, hopefully, for tomorrow's vlog. Democratic Earth. Earth.